Perhaps one of the most amazing stories in aviation is the story of Vesna Volovich, a 22-year-old flight attendant who became famous in their home country of Yugoslavia following a rather unbelievable set of circumstances. On January 26, 1972, she worked on board Yugoslav Airlines Flight 367. Little did she know that day that her life would change forever. Though her story has been shared countless times, what about the flight she was on? Why did it actually crash? So let's examine the events of that flight and what actually happened on board. To simplify, the country of Yugoslavia no longer exists. It was once a large country in southeastern Europe between Italy, Greece and Albania. Today, six to seven, depending on who you ask, countries now make up the land where Yugoslavia once stood. The country was a political cornerstone of 20th century Europe. How this country broke apart in the early 1990s is complicated, and though for today's topic it is important to know that different groups of people in this old, diverse nation did not exactly get along with others, the events of the early 1990s are not really relevant to today's discussion. Yugoslavia in its time did have a large national airline. It was often referred to by its abbreviation GAT, which stands for Yugoslav Aero Transport. In the 1970s, Yugoslavia was actually a popular tourist destination for many Europeans. Flight 367 was a journey from Stockholm in Sweden to Belgrade, once the capital of Yugoslavia, now part of Serbia today. The flight was to make intermediate stopovers in Copenhagen and Zagreb, now the capital of modern Croatia. The plane left Stockholm that day in 1972 on its fateful trip, performing the first leg to Copenhagen without issue. It was the leg to Zagreb that would prove fatal. On the flight deck of the Douglas DC-9 plane, Captain Ludwig Razdria and First Officer Ratko Mihic began flying the plane south without suspecting that anything was amiss. In the cabin were a further 23 passengers and three flight attendants, including Vesna Volovich. She was actually only on this flight due to a mix-up with another flight attendant with a similar name. Volovich was a rather well-traveled young woman for the time, even before becoming a flight attendant, studying in England and living in Sweden for some time. Due to her history of travel and interest in English music, she became proficient in the language and was hired by GAT as a flight attendant. On flight 367 on that day, the first 45 minutes or so of the flight were normal. The plane climbed up to 33,000 feet and the passengers settled in for the journey. Our, as it would soon turn out to be, extremely lucky flight attendant was performing her duties in the center of the plane. The plane here, as mentioned already, was a Douglas DC-9, an aircraft which itself has had a bit of a history. As it would turn out, the cause of this tragedy wouldn't stem from the plane itself, but rather what was contained in its cargo hold. Suddenly, the normal cabin atmosphere abruptly changed towards the front of the plane. An explosion blew off the nose section of the aircraft. This explosion exposing the inside of the plane depressurized the cabin. At 33,000 feet, it is basically impossible for the average person to breathe and remain conscious for long. The rest of the plane would largely remain intact during its fall to the ground. For air traffic controllers, the plane appeared to have simply vanished. For residents in and around the village of Serbska Kamenice, located in the north of what is today known as Czechia, at the time Czechoslovakia, they discovered a scene of devastation as the remains of a passenger plane came crashing down in their local area. Three large, distinct pieces of wreckage were found. The nose section, the left engine, and the rest of the plane that crashed in a wooded area outside of town. Naturally, those in the area began looking for survivors and discovered that all the passengers, the two pilots, and two flight attendants were dead. By all reasonable assumptions, an in-flight breakup at high altitude probably should have killed everyone on that plane. However, Vesna Volovich was discovered to be alive. Severely wounded with a brain hemorrhage, fractured skull, broken legs, vertebrae, ribs, and pelvis, but alive. 
She was found by a former World War II medic and was taken to hospital in Prague and remained in a coma for weeks. She awoke with no recollection of the flight, her memory of that day ending at Copenhagen Airport where she joined the flight. As to how she cheated death that day, we don't know for certain, but there is a theory, as it's believed that she was up and moving about the cabin at the time when the explosion occurred, a cabin trolley may have secured her towards the rear of the cabin, keeping her from being pulled out of the fuselage. This, when coupled with the fact that the section of the plane she was in came down in a snowy wooded area, this may have softened the impact somewhat. Vesta Volovich, to this day, holds the record for surviving the longest freefall without a parachute. The question so far in this video remains, what actually happened to the plane? Planes don't just explode for no reason. A clue into what happened could perhaps be found in the surviving flight attendant's own account of the day in Copenhagen Airport before the plane left. It is suspected that the disaster of Flight 367 was indeed a terrorist attack. It is difficult to say for certain who carried out the attack, but it is believed that militant Croatian nationalists constructed a bomb that was concealed inside a briefcase. The would-be terrorist then checked their piece of luggage onto Flight 367 in Stockholm. The bag containing the bomb was loaded onto the plane in the forward cargo compartment. The terrorist flew to Copenhagen on that plane, exited the aircraft during the turnaround and left the airport, leaving their bag on board. It was in the terminal at Copenhagen airport where Vesna Volovich caught a glimpse of the suspected terrorist. In her own words in an interview following the incident, we were waiting for the aircraft to arrive from Stockholm. As it was late, we were in the terminal in Sword Park. I saw all the passengers and crew deplane. One man seemed terribly annoyed. It was not only me that noticed him either. Other crew members saw him, as did the station manager in Copenhagen. I think it was the man who put the bomb in the baggage. I think he had checked in a bag in Stockholm, got off in Copenhagen, and never reboarded the flight. No one knows who that person was. Volovich herself believed that the man in question was killed, if not dead, by the time that war broke out in Yugoslavia. Yugoslavia believed that Croatian nationalists bombed the plane and was just one attack of 128 that were carried out against Yugoslavia over the years. These attacks were made on both military and civilian targets. In fact, the very same day of Flight 367, a train out of Vienna destined for Zagreb was also bombed with no fatalities. This is perhaps supported by the fact that the day after the bombing, a man asserting himself to be a Croatian nationalist claimed responsibility for the attack and came forward to Swedish media, but still to this day, no arrests have ever been made in connection to the bombing. In the end, our sole survivor recovered well and was even determined to remain flying. Despite her ordeal, Vesna Volovich never developed a fear of flying. She, however, would later find herself at a desk job at GAT. What is interesting is how Yugoslav media twisted her story somewhat throughout the years. Like many in Yugoslavia in its end days, Volovich took part in anti-government protests to the disdain of the Yugoslavian upper echelons. Pro-government media outlets at the time began running smear campaigns against her. Doubts about the altitude to which she fell were unduly highlighted. Conspiracies about the plane being shot down by Czechoslovakia also began to spread. Given the political instability in this part of Europe at the time, other political groups and individuals began to latch onto these stories when it was convenient. Vesna Volovich was fired by Yugoslav Airlines. Nevertheless, her story lived on, as did she up to the age of 66, before passing away in 2016. As for Yugoslav Airlines, the air carrier would change as the political situation deteriorated and recovered. Now based out of Serbia today, the airline was eventually rebranded as Air Serbia in 2013, retaining the GAT name until then. In terms of airport security, things have come a long way since the early 1970s. Flight 367 was certainly not the final time a bomb was loaded into a cargo compartment 
with the connected terrorist fleeing the targeted plane during a stopover. Air India Flight 182 was bombed southwest of Ireland in 1985. Pan Am Flight 103 was blown up over the Scottish Lowlands in 1988. In both of these incidents, terrorists exploited airport security and baggage checks by checking in baggage onto connecting flights, the bombers only going as far as one airport. Technology and now over a century's worth of knowledge has now led to flying in all areas really becoming safer than it ever has been. Hello everyone, thank you once again for watching this video. If you found this video to be interesting, be sure to be subscribed as there is always a new video every Saturday. The topic of this video actually was one I had always heard about but never really explored it very much in terms of research until I looked into it for this video. It is a rather famous story but it had been requested multiple times though so I'm happy to have brought it to you today. Hopefully next week we'll be dropping another railway video. I will be going rather local for this one so I can't wait to share it with you when it comes out. It's got a lot of history in it. Anyway, it is that time of the week to take a moment to thank my amazing patrons over on Patreon who have contributed to supporting the channel further. Their ongoing support has truly been incredible. Their names are scrolling on the screen right now so if you see your name here, a massive thanks to you. If you yourself want to support the channel further, you can join the Disaster Breakdown Patreon from just £1 per month and the link to that will be in the pinned comment below. All patrons get early access to all new content and videos just like this one, two days before they go out publicly on YouTube. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching, I'll end things here, have a great day and I will see you next week, goodbye!